In your headlines, a man was sentenced to seven years after a shooting relative in November 2021. The Department of Education announced that students must still wear masks. And the Department of Environment and Coastal Resources hosted the second installment in a series of coastal vending meetings. From the PTV Broadcasting Headquarters in Providencial is your number one source for news. I'm Erica Pinales delivering the latest from across the country this Thursday, May 12, 2022, right to your door. Newswatch starts now. A man has been sentenced. On Monday after an incident back in November 2021 that left one man with a bullet wound to the face, Newswatch has the latest. After an incident that was said to have been unintentional led to the injury of his cousin, Leonardo Forbes of Blue Hills has been sentenced to seven years in prison. Late Sunday night on November 1, 2021, at a Millennium Highway home, 32-year-old Zachary Rigby was shot in the face by a man we learned was known to him. Thankfully, he survived. He was rushed to the Cheshire Hall Medical Center and later flown overseas for medical attention. Now, six months later, his cousin, the shooter, has been sentenced. However, the charge of inflicting grievous bodily harm was withdrawn when the victim, Rigby, requested that no action be taken against Forbes. The accused was sentenced on Monday, May 9th to seven years in prison after pleading guilty to three counts of keeping firearms and keeping ammunition. That investigation led to the execution of a firearms warrant at Forbes' residence, where officers recovered three illegal handguns and 104 rounds of ammunition. He is expected to be released from prison in 2029. The region's advancement is only 20 days away. Stay tuned, Turks and Caicos, and take a look. In yesterday's newscast, TCIG and CDB held the annual meeting media launch. The Premier Honorable Charles Washington Mizik, who is the current chairman of the Caribbean Development Bank's Board of Governors, along with the bank's president, Dr. Hygienist Jean Leon, bringing remarks on the upcoming meeting. The, the annual meeting is the single most important meeting in the bank's agenda. And uh, the chair plays as equally important a role in, in that line by virtue of managing, as it were, the agenda for the year and helping to set the agenda for, for the year. And so it is um, with distinct pleasure that we are looking to come to TCI in just under a month's time, uh, from the 13th to the 17th of, uh, of June. He explained that the theme was chosen as it coincides with the CDB's four pillars. We narrowed this down to saying the three things have to work together, and they work together only in the sense that we have a holistic idea of development. So much so we could literally use the phrase, leave no parts behind. So we have to move the entirety. We move the people. We move in the social space, we move in the institutional space, we move in the productive capacity space, we move in how do we bring together uh, different people through partnerships to help. But the idea is always that when we grow, when we move forward, we do that in a complete and holistic way so that the development is not lopsided. The president later shared that we must work together so that when we advance, we advance as a whole. And so the idea of focusing this year on the first of the three pillars, the measure better to target better, is I think just what we say you do in the TCI, you measure twice. I have a friend who says you need to measure twice and cut once. Let's, uh, let's do it right in the first place. Uh, that's a the very easy way to understand this. But in principle, you cannot target, you cannot look to achieve if you haven't got measurement. And the better that measurement, then the better you are able to target and focus your mind in a better space. And that happens in everything we do. It is not just um, in economics, it happens in your regular day life, it happens in everything you do. The better you are able to measure, the better you are able to target. The president advised that we must be willing to adapt, but most importantly, we must be resilient. 
And so that's the, the underlying theme. And adaptation and resilience is to give a bit of a focus on one sustainability at the broader level that as we look to sustain ourselves, we have to be willing to adapt. And most importantly, we have to be resilient. He mentioned that other bigger countries have a lot of support access and more benefits compared to our small nations, which allows them to recover swiftly from disasters. When a hurricane comes through the Eastern Caribbean, like your Dominicas, it is almost certainly to hit Florida with probability one after about a week. We're in the same geographic zone, same vulnerability. We will be hit by the same natural disaster. But when it passes over, over Dominica and flattens Dominica and everything called Dominica is gone and everything that was used like debt to build that Dominica remains. Okay, remains. It doesn't get washed away with the, with the hurricane. And that same storm goes and hits Florida. It hits one state. Now, even if it does a lot of damage to Florida, Florida immediately has access to FEMA, access to federal funding, access to other support that allows Florida to recover from that same Cat 5 hurricane within record time. Making a reference to Dominica, he mentioned that because they're a middle-income country, they can't access conceptual finance, which is an issue he believes we need to grapple with. So that is the issue that I think we need to grapple with. The fact that even if you have done better, it is not how much better you are, but really your ability to recover. And that is predicated on the need for adequate and affordable financing. Call it concessional, call it affordable, whatever language we want to use, if we don't have access to that finance, we will not be able to recover and recover fast enough to be able to continue on our development trajectory. So that, that's a, a, a biggish um, element that we are going to highlight, and I'm glad we'll be able to do this in TCI because you face exactly the type of issues that I'm talking about here. Uh, high to middle income uh, country, uh, equally vulnerable to, um, to climate change and to hurricanes, and equally locked out of all access to concessional finance. President Leon believes that this narrative can be changed if we refocus on IRS as a true measure of change. Then I think that can make uh, a very big change, a very big dent on the equitable access to finance for developing countries, not just in the Caribbean, but across the world. Don't go anywhere. More news watch when we return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to News Watch. Despite the suspension of the mask wearing mandate, the Department of Education has recently announced that students are not exempt while in the classroom setting. Here's more. 
Newswatch now learns that despite the discontinuation of the mask-wearing mandate announced by Minister of Health Honorable Jamel Robinson, which commenced on May 1st, for the general public, students are still required to adhere to mask-wearing and face-covering rules while on campus. The announcement was made just last week advising students to walk with their masks and face coverings in tow. While no reason has been given behind the decision to reinstate the measures for students, it is most likely due to the consideration given to the number of students in bigger institutions, enclosed classroom areas, and increased face-to-face -face interaction following on-campus learning. No date has been given as to when the mandate may be reviewed. The Department of Environment and Coastal Resources hosted the second installment in a series of coastal vending meetings on May 3rd, 2022. Newswatch brings you the details. The first meeting held in Grand Turk was well attended by vendors from across the sector. Tuesday's meeting was specifically aimed towards jet ski operators that provide services in Providenciales. A person who seeks to operate a jet ski shall, before he rents out the craft to a person, a. Provide the person with an orientation training on the use of the craft, which shall include the operation of the craft and safety procedures, and b. Provide a form approved by the director to the renter to sign and to initial to indicate that the renter understands and acknowledges the contents therein. These rules and regulations are in place to maintain the delicate balance between sustainable use of the marine environment, its carrying capacity and economic gain, as well as to ensure safety of life at sea. The DCR also discussed necessary insurance coverage for all operators for the protection of them, their businesses and their clients, and the department agreed to endeavor to facilitate a discussion between vendors and insurance companies to allow for the provision of insurance. Don't touch that remote, we'll be right back. Coming up next is your weather forecast. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providencialis, Midis Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business days for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to Newswatch. Here's the latest in your weather forecast. Here's your weather forecast for May 13th, 2022. For the nation's capital, Grand Turk, on Friday, partly cloudy skies, high 81, low 76, winds east-southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. For South Caicos on Friday, partly cloudy skies, high 81, low 76, winds east-southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. For North and Middle Caicos, partly cloudy skies, high 81, low 76, winds east-southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. For Paired and Pinekey on Friday, partly cloudy skies, high 82, low 76, winds east-southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And on Providenciales on Friday, Partly cloudy skies, high 82, low 76, winds east-southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now for your sunrise and sunset, sunrise 6.12 a.m., sunset 7.21 p.m. And for your high tides and low tides, high tides 5.54 a.m., 6.20 p.m., and low tides 11.58 a.m., 11.58 p.m. And that's it for your weather forecast. We'll be right back with more News Watch. People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. 
We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We are creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV. We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Here's another story that made this edition of Newswatch. Dr. Carlton Mills, a long-standing educator, opened up to Newswatch in an exclusive interview about how he overcame the circumstances that almost held him back from attaining his education dream. You know, going to Jamaica with only $500 and having to, to survive off 30-something dollars a month, right, um, paying bus fare. And for two years, for lunch, I had a Jamaican patty and a bottle of soda. For two years, that was my lunch. Well, I had a meal when I got home. But you know, I couldn't afford anything else. I couldn't even afford to take a girlfriend to the movies, you know, um, but, um, and I, I, I think all of that made me, f that, that, that toughness, I'm sorry, that h hardship, those challenges with little money made me focus more on my studies. So that's how I started. He explained that from there, he moved on to UWE, where he got a certificate in social work, when at the time his interest was in being a counselor. He also added that after getting certified in social work, he then went on and got his bachelor's. The rest is history. I went, then went on to UWI, did my bachelor's, and uh, that was another struggle. Um, I was accepted by UWI in 1982 was turned down again for a scholarship, right? I borrowed money from the, which was TC, with now TC, with, uh, Invest TCI, but it was TC Invest Development Board at the time. Only, they, 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 only, um, they, they were only lending $10,000. And um, that could only serve me for one year. After com exhausting my funds, I came back home. I went to the same minister again. He told me no. And I, I want to make a point here to say thanks to Honorable Norman Saunders, who was the chief minister at the time and the representative of South Caicos. And I went to him and he sought a scholarship out for me. That's how I was able to complete my studies. Even though Mills was denied of scholarships multiple times, he persisted and was able to continue his studies with the help of Honorable Norman Saunders, who was the representative for South Caicos at the time. So I, I want to say all of this going back to your first question, all of these struggles and blocks that were put in my way made me, give me that inspiration and that desire to help young people and to encourage young people that no matter what curveballs are thrown at you, you gotta learn to deal with each one and take it one step at a time. Later in this exclusive, we touched on success and Dr. Mills was inquired on whether he deems himself successful. In my own rights, yes. Some people see success as having so much around them, having millions in the bank. My success comes through having a beautiful wife, uh, two biological kids and three um, through marriage, so five kids. Um, and having achieved a, a doctorate degree, um, at having been able to study. I mean, coming from a little community like South Caicos. He elucidated on the satisfaction he feels from knowing that he accomplished completing his studies and excelling from the expectations of becoming a fisherman from South Caicos. I see that as successful. I see it as successful being able to remember at Long Bay with the two of you. I mean, I'm sitting two past students, although I didn't get to see you guys graduate. Unfortunately, it was my dream. But going into the banks and um, looking, at, um, looking at government now, the past government, the premier, having to know, knowing that the Honorable Charlene Cartwright, that I, you know, she was in my history class, one of the first group of students I sent up for history while in fourth form and passed with an A at, at, at CX, um, G, 
GC, you know, Honorable Jay Saunders was also in that same class. You know, Mr. Renwell Lewis, um, who is now one of the education officers. You know, when you look back at many of these students, the, 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 the um, CEO of Fortis, Ms. Ruth, Ms. Mrs. Ruth Forbes, you know, uh, having the privilege of teaching her and knowing what she went through, you know, and um, I, I think I was principal at the time when, when she was in high school. So when I look at that's how I see success. Stay tuned for part three of this exclusive in a subsequent newscast. And that brings us to the end of this edition of The Real News. I hate to leave you so soon, but of course, you can join us right back here every weekday at 6.30 p.m. and tap into our social media platforms at www.ptv8tci.com. I'm Erica Pinales, keeping you informed, updated, and affiliated. Until next time.